Welcome to section 4-5. This is Mrs. Steiner speaking. In section 4-5, we are going to start a multi-section process of learning how to solve these quadratic functions that you learned how to graph in section 4-1 and 4-2, and that you learned how to factor in section 4-4. So, wherever a graph of a function intersects the x-axis, the function's value is 0. That means y equals 0 on the x-axis. Okay. The x value that gives a y or a function value of 0 is called a 0 of a function. I bet that's a vocab word that will end up on your vocab sheet for chapter 4. To find the values of these zeros of our quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c, we will solve this related quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay. And in section 4-5, we're going to solve a couple different ways. We will solve by graphing, and this will be more of the topic for tomorrow. Oops. Yeah. To solve by graphing, we will graph like section 4-1 and section 4-2, okay, and see where the curve crosses the x-axis. But today's topic is going to be to solve using the zero product property that says if I have factors equal to zero, then one of the factors equals zero or the other factor equals zero. So what we're going to do to solve by the zero product property is to get the equation set equal to zero. It must say equals zero. And then you are going to have to factor with your section 4-4 factoring skills. You've been practicing now, them now for at least a week. Now, when you're done factoring, we will set each factor equal to zero, and we will finish our solving. So that's what we're going to do as we go through example one. I am going to make my ACB tables just like I did in section 4-4. Okay, here's one. A times C is negative 18. B is positive 3. So I know I will subtract... Factors of 18 and see which ones make 3 when I subtract. Ooh, I think I hit them. If I subtract 6 and 3, I make 3. And 6 needs to be the bigger number. It's positive 3 and minus 3. So I'm going to come over here from this set and say x minus 3 and x plus 6. Now, I will set this equal to zero. And what this property says is I have to set each of these equal to zero and solve. So add three to the other side, x equals three. Now set this factor equal to zero and solve. Subtract six to the other side, x equals negative six. And here are your solutions to so your solve by factoring. Okay, on part B, I have to get the equation set equal to zero, first step. This equation is not set equal to zero, so I am going to have to add 6 to both sides. So it says 6x squared plus 13x plus 6 equals zero. And then once it's set equal to zero, I will make my ACB table. I will multiply, see I don't have a GCF, I should always still be on guard for GCF, but I don't have one. I will multiply my A and C and I get positive 36, my B is 13, I will add the factors of 36 to get 13, so now I need to say 1 and 36, well that's way too big. 2 and 18, still too big. 3 and 12, no. 4 and 9, ooh, 4 and 9 add to be 13. So I'm going to take this set, and I'm going to say x plus 4 and x plus 9. 
But now I have to remember from the section for 4 that when my coefficient is not 1, I have to take it down here and say divide by that coefficient. Under each of these constants in the factors, reduce. So this says x plus 2 thirds. And this one is what? x plus 3 halves. Well, at this point in time, I really don't have to now then put this a as the coefficient here because I could set each of these factors individually equal to 0 and solve from there. So if I have x plus 2 thirds equals 0, x equals negative 2 thirds. And if I have x plus 3 halves equals 0, x equals, and I'm going to subtract 3 halves onto the other side, negative 3 halves. And there I have my solutions to solve by factoring. One more point. If you did want to take these factors that I had, and you did want to do what we did with them in section 4, 4, you would have said this becomes 3x plus 2 and set that equal to 0. Now let's see if we get the same thing. I subtract 2 to the other side. I divide both sides by 3. See, I got the same thing. Okay. I would put 2 right here as the coefficient of the x. I would set that factor equal to 0. I would subtract 3 to the other side. I would divide by 2. Look, I got the same thing. So when your goal is to just factor, you do need to do this step right here. When your goal is to factor and solve, you could really bypass that one taking this a and putting it as a coefficient of the x when it doesn't reduce because you're ready to set equal to 0 and it already has part of the solve done for you. Okay, as we continue on with this example one, a couple more styles of factoring. Now I'm down to two terms, not my three-term trinomial. And I remember from 4-4 four, four that in my two terms, if I had perfect square minus perfect square, that was called difference square. So I had to think of what's the root of this. It's 5 and n. And I used that 5 and n as my first in both quantities. What is the root of this? It's 3. So I use this as 3 in both quantities. And then I say plus and I say minus. And then I set this equal to 0. So now I have each factor that I individually set equal to 0. And I do my two-step solve. So subtract 3. Divide by 5. And I come up with n equals negative 3 fifths. Add 3. Divide by 5. And n equals positive 3 fifths. Here's my two answers. And our last solve by factoring example. As I look across here, I see two terms. I see a squared, but the coefficient is not a squared. So I can't just do difference of squares. Even though I see a squared here too, this is not a squared. So I can't do difference of squares. But how about I look for GCF first? Because that's what I see. I see a factor of 2 in both of these terms. I see a factor of x in both of these terms. And if I say 6 divided by 2, here's 3, and x squared divided by x, and here's x. If I say minus, and then 4 divided by 2 is 2, x divided by x is 1, and now I set this equal to 0, then I have to set each of my factor sets equal to 0 and do the solve. Well, here I just divide by 2 and x comes out to be 0. Here I add 2 to the other side. I divide by 3. And I have my two answer sets. Okay. 
So if you'll take a moment and pause and do this guided practice, I will be back with you in a moment and we will work through the last example and then you can do a final guided practice for today. Okay, now as we face this example two, we are already given two solutions, x equals two and x equals negative six. They are solutions. And if we're given solutions and we're asked to write an equa a quadratic equation in standard form, meaning y equals ax squared plus bx plus c form, that means we're really starting at this spot and we are working our way back up to the polynomial. And then we will set it equal to y instead of equal to zero. So if this is solution, what did it come from? Well, it came from x minus 2 as a factor. And if this is a solution, what did it came, come from? Well, it came from, I moved this negative 6 to this side, so I'm going to have to reverse the process and put it back, x plus 6 as a factor. And now to get a polynomial in standard form from these factors, I will FOIL them together. So I have x squared, I have plus 6x, minus 2x, and then minus 12. So my equation at the end is going to be y equals, because it says quadratic equation, make it an equation, x squared plus 4x minus 12. So now in this one lesson, you've learned to go full circle. You've learned to tear apart and factor and then solve from the factors. You are now learning how to build from two numbers into here's what solutions look like put them back into factored form foil them together and then to make sure that you write it as an equation in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c right so you try that with these two given solutions come up with your equation in standard form and i will see you tomorrow